which is the cheapest EV tariff to charge an electric car on from home? That's essentially what this video is answering. Now I've seen people drive miles down the road to essentially save one, maybe two pence per litre on their petrol or diesel refill. But when it comes to a home energy tariff, a lot of people don't seem to bother. I mean, surely that amount of saving is enough to make anybody go, it's worth spending an hour or two to do the research myself to find out which is the cheapest. Well, whether it's just the complication sort of side of it that, you know, I've been there myself, it is a bit of a faff, it is well, a bit of a head scratcher, or maybe it's just laziness. Whatever the reason is, I've done the video for you. I've done, I've done it for you, essentially. I've got all the figures, I've looked at all the EV tariffs, and based on averages of averages, I've got the cheapest EV tariff that's on the market right now, kind of August-ish 2024, because this is something you need to do on uh, what yearly basis maybe even every six months because again it can save you hundreds of pounds a year being on the right tariff so this is something i've done every year for many many years now about six six seven years i think uh, and well it's always meant that my running costs are ultra ultra low hopefully you will be able to have the same benefit with an ev you're watching this you can clearly charge at home so therefore let's take advantage of that and get you on the, the best rate If you want you can use a three pin plug to charge a car but for me it's a backup at best you really need a proper charger not a three pin plug one so you'll get better speed you'll be able to take advantage of the four five six hour window by getting more in that space and it's safer so if you're getting a proper home charger you will probably need some sort of i don't know a charge company to install it a nationwide company at that now, if I needed a home charger, they installed mine, would be getting one from smarthomecharge.co.uk. They have a huge array of chargers. You can scroll down the list. There's a ton of them. You've got a comparison tool. So you tell them what car you've got and they will pick the best one for your particular vehicle. They also have a powerful comparison tool. You put your car in, you put the charger you want in and it'll tell you the tariffs available and how much it will cost. I've had mine installed by them, my brothers, Harry's, or by Smart Home Charge, and it's been faultless. Check their Trustpilot score, and please thank them for sponsoring this channel. So it's at smarthomecharge.co.uk. Now, because this is YouTube, you have to show your workings out, otherwise people don't believe you. So, all hail the whiteboard of truth. Wait a minute, a mark. Right, so this is all based on averages. Then this is how I've done the calculations to see who's the cheapest EV tariff that I'm gonna show you in a second. So house usage, car usage, because obviously both now are part of the puzzle. Average daily usage for a house, eight kilowatt hours, just slightly less. So that works out to roughly 2,900 kilowatt hours per year. Average electric car miles. Now this is quite important to, uh, to specify this because electric cars typically do more miles than their petrol or diesel counterparts. Um, partly because they're electric and partly because newer cars do more miles than older cars. So most EVs are what, under four or five years old, therefore they tend to do more miles, at least at this stage, than the petrol versions as an average. So that's why that's 9,345 miles per year. Um, and that is excluding, so I've knocked off miles that you will do on the public charging network. So that's not how many miles the car's doing, that's how many miles the car is charging at home. I've also used an average efficiency of 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So based on that and that, we can figure out all this. Now, because we're also on a time of day tariff, or at least all the tariffs I'm showing you are time of day tariffs. So that's where it's cheaper, usually at night for four, five, six hours. And for the other 18, 19, 20 hours, it's a lot more expensive. We need to know the difference between the cheap and the uh, peak usage so we can figure out the cost from that, of course. Using my own uh, usage patterns and uh, looking at other people's as well, of course, then 60% of the household usage, this is with no home battery or solar, remember, 60% uh, is done at home on peak rate, 40% obviously cheap. That's for the house, for the car, because again, you're charging at home. 
if you're watching this video, you're clearly going to be charging at home and have that advantage. Only 5% of the charging that people typically do, home chargers anyway, um, out of all the charging you do at home will be during the peak rate. Because you plug your car in, if you're unfamiliar with this, you plug your car in at any time and it won't start charging until the cheap rate kicks in. So it's 95% cheap rate. If you're not doing that, then you've either got a very edge case use um, or you're doing something wrong. That's easy to achieve. So these are, are both very good averages and easy to achieve. We've got 145 kilowatt hours of peak house usage and just 11.3 of peak car usage, 96.8 for off peak and 214 kilowatt hours for um, off peak car usage. So that's how I've done the calculations. Let's now see who is cheapest. And here we are, the board is finished. Well, actually it's not complete. I've left the top three off to increase tension levels. So goodbye to everybody who's about to skip ahead towards the end of the video where you can see the top. Now, very briefly, this is the yearly cost of each tariff based on the calculations I've just shown you. And this is the amount of hours, the time you've got in terms of the cheap period. So five hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours, and so forth. So the one with seven hours at the cheap rate obviously gives you a bit of an advantage in certain circumstances than the others that give you five. So that needs to be factored in if you're gonna be a heavy usage where you're gonna to have to charge for longer. Uh, and all of the tariffs here, just to make it clear, um, account for the car's usage and the house's usage. So the house gets the cheap rate, not just the car. There is one that I've left off here, I think it was from Ovo, because that didn't include the house usage. And ultimately the price was, well, it was down here somewhere. So I didn't bother including it, just in case you're wondering where that went. Right, so who's in third place? Uh, this was a bit of a surprise actually, although it's all quite close together in terms of the price. This is British Gas, and that's their, I think it's version 8 tariff, EV driver tariff or something like that. You'll be able to find it by just going on their electric vehicle tariffs. So British Gas in third place, that's very uncommon. You've got five hours and a total of just over a thousand pounds, thousand and fifteen pounds for the year. Remember that's for the house and all your electric fuel that you've done from charging at home. So top two, who's missing? Well, number two, we have Octopus. So I'll just put Oct. And this is Octopus Go tariff. That gives you five hours. Last time I was on, it was only four. So they've obviously increased that. And now who's the top one? Well, because I had to put two different tariffs, it's Octopus Intelligent tariff. Now, the reason why I've had to separate that uh, is because not everybody can get Octopus Intelligent. And whilst I'm talking about Octopus, there's a referral link in the description below. So if you decide to switch to Octopus from this video, then there's a link in the description below. You follow that link, you get 50 quid, I get 50 quid, accredited to our accounts just for using the referral link. So thanks for doing that, that really does support the channel. Now, Octopus Intelligent, it gives you six hours instead of five. It's cheaper in terms of the per kilowatt hour, per kilowatt hour rate. You can see there's quite a difference there. You get a better export tariff if you do have solar, but the asterisk is for the fact that only certain cars and only certain chargers are supported. So if you've got a certain type of charger or a certain car, Tesla for example is included, then you, you can get on this tariff. It, it, they have to connect to the car or connect to the charger, which is why they don't support that many at this time, but it, it, it is expanding. Now, this, seven hours, with Eon Next version three. That is obviously in fifth place because of the cost based on the calculations, but you do get an extra two hours. Now, if you're only charging your car for two, three, four hours, five hours even a day, which gives you a, you know, a decent amount of miles, that's not really a benefit to you other than a little bit of your house's base load coming from the extra couple of hours. But that is something to, to, to bear in mind. You think, well, actually, it could come in handy occasionally, or I do a lot of miles, or I've got something in my house. You know, if you've got a heat pump and you've got seven hours to run that heat pump at night off the cheap rate rather than just five, it's something to factor in, which is why you always have to do your own research in essentially an exercise of why it's worth actually looking at the best tariff you're on. If you're on the price cap, which I think is at 22 point 
2.8 pence per kilo hour. At the moment, that's set to rise a bit as well. Look at that, nearly 1,500 pounds, just over 900. So there's, there's a 550-ish quid difference between being lazy and being on a flat rate tariff with an EV and being on the best tariff. Just as a point of comparison, you'll be able to add about 25 to 35 miles of range to a car per hour on charge. It, it varies depending on the car, of course, in terms of how efficient it is. But yeah, 25, let's say 30 miles on average per hour. So this one that gives you an extra two hours compared to most of these, then again, if you're doing a lot of miles on a regular basis, it might be worth paying that little extra for you because you will benefit. Something else which I find quite interesting, especially to those people that a year or two ago on various YouTube channels were saying the EV bubble has burst because the price of electricity shot up. Uh, last year, all of these were much more expensive, especially the price cap. But Octopus Go is 13.5 cent less than it was last year. So it's exactly the same calculations and usage. Uh, and the intelligence 15.7 and it's similar across the board really. I mean the price difference between them two isn't a lot is it? It's, it's roughly 13 pounds but if you were on good energy and you switched to British Gas that 13 pounds would pay for your entire year's membership on this channel. Just 99p a month and you can cancel it at any time. <coughs> Shameless plug. So, so click on the join button, it's next to subscribe and you will get this video on Sunday. So as I'm filming this, to make it as current as possible, it's the same week, it's, uh, it's Wednesday today. Members see this on Sunday, everyone else gets it the following Friday. So effectively, by becoming a member, you're saving money earlier. And if I have saved you hundreds of pounds, then that, <laughs> it's a bargain. But not everyone can do that, not everyone wants to do that, not everyone can afford to do that. So if you could just like, subscribe and all the usual crap that YouTube tells you to do every single video, that'd be great as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.